Happy to be here with my very special guest this week, actor and producer Drew Moreline. Drew, how are you? I'm doing great, Derek. How are you, man? I'm fantastic. And we were just chatting right before right before we started, you know, about uh, a pretty cool video game project that you're a part of that I, you know, we'll get into a, a little bit later. But I appreciate you taking the time to do the show. Of course. Thank you so much for, for making the space and the time for me. Absolutely. So I primarily talk with you know those that work in the, the film and TV industry on this show, like actors, directors, screenwriters. And what's interesting, and I always start the conversations with this because there's I, I use the analogy that there's not really a like how to guidebook on how to get into the industry. That's what's so great about it. Or one of the things that makes it so great is that everybody has their own unique path as to how they got into it. So what what's your path? What's the the reason that you wanted to get into the film and entertainment industry? Hmm. Um, well, thank you for the question. Uh, I, I don't I don't I don't know if I ever wanted to get into the film and entertainment industry. Uh, I I would say I, I came out acting a fool. Uh, my my dad's a sculptor, mom's a dancer, and uh, I very much grew it up in a house of art. And it was encouraged and supported. And um, I, I loved, I think I was dancing in like every aisle, everywhere we ever went. I was always dancing and moving and, <clears throat> you know, performing. And yeah, I started to kind of do more shows as I, as I got into my teens, um, doing like summer theater camps and stuff like that. And then got into high school and I was a three semester varsity athlete and also doing theater. And the, I had a, a, a professor, a teacher in, in high school, uh, Jim Spiegel, and he sort of helped grow and foster this love of the stage and sort of helped me to understand that, that, that there could be a path here. Um, uh, little did I know what the path would look like. Uh, it's a, it's a wild, and crazy roller coaster of a ride. Um, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world, uh, simply because I wouldn't know what to do with myself if I were to do anything else. Because, uh, you know, there's a certain adrenaline that comes with, with being in this industry, right? Every single day is different. I have no idea. Truth, truthfully, this is not a joke at all. I have no idea what I'm doing tomorrow. Uh, right? Like <laughs> they could text me tonight and be like, Hey, this just came through. You got to be here at 10 AM, uh, with a fitting right before at nine and I'm there. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a wild ride. And, and I think, I think once I realized that I wanted to do this, then I, I always say that I'm a, a business, a business person stuck in a creative's body. I quickly realized that I had to turn it into a full-fledged business uh, and learn how to monetize it. Um, so uh, I, I, I focus on every single path and lane that there is in the entertainment industry, uh, which is really the only way I feel that we can survive and flourish in this industry is to have all of those multiple revenue streams coming in at once. Um, so yeah, I, I, I love what I do. I love, I love all aspects of it. I love doing stage. I love doing uh, film, television. I love sitting in my sound booth and recording animation and voiceovers and audiobooks and uh, and then of course the video game space has a very special place in my heart. Uh, I've I've really kind of honed in and perfected. I, I think I hope perfected that skill set. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's that's kind of the story. And that's what's so fascinating, especially about what you'd call the modern film slash TV or really it's all under the entertainment umbrella. There's just different branches that go out to and you. And I, I think you're 100 percent right in that you have to try and monetize as many avenues as possible, because there is so much to do that it's important to have that skill set in order to be able to adapt you know like you i know you do producing as well i'm just doing all kinds of different things in the industry that way you're not 
so tied down to one thing? Yeah, I think it's a really great point in question, Derek, because I think the pandemic, number one, and the strike that just happened, uh, number two, are great examples of if you are beholden to one lane, there are force majeures that are going to cause you to lose your livelihood for, you know, uh, an in, uh, undetermined amount of time. Uh, and, you know, I, of course, I, I just feel fortunate that during those times, it was challenging and very difficult, but I knew that I had work because there are other lanes available to me. Um, and of course, those lanes are available to everyone. And, you know, I, I fully encourage and believe that we should all be doing all of them because our skill sets transfer across all mediums. Um, uh, you know, anybody who says that, that, that they're, they only do this one thing, I would challenge them to say, I believe that you have the ability to learn. Of course, it's a separate skill set. But you have the juice, you have the training, you have the the raw natural talent that you've flourished in this one lane, and that can you can definitely apply that to any other lane in this industry. Um, yeah, and of course, producing became very important to me because first of all, it gave me a place to put my like extremely busy business mind uh, that I would always for the, for the first gosh. 12 years of my career would throw at my acting. Right. And I, I realized rather slowly, actually, that that is not always helpful. Right. Uh, that's my creative side. Um, and I needed an outlet for my business side. And um, it's been, of course, that satisfying that was incredible. But on top of that, uh, you know, being able to build uh, vehicles for myself uh, to propel the thing that I care about the most, my acting career, um, sort of that combination of those two things was just a beautiful, beautiful thing for me personally. Uh, and yeah, I think it's, I think it, it's, it's an inevitable uh, part of our future is being that multifaceted, multi-hyphenate, the Swiss army knife of the industry, right? Like, I mean, you look at any star out there, they're executive producing their own projects. Um, and of course, they bring a global value to that project. And then they want to do that project. They've read that script. They love it. And they're like, I'm going to come on board in an executive producer, producer capacity to get this project across the finish line. There's a, a comment you made in what you just said that is so fascinating to me because in the 10 years that I've been doing this podcast, I have not heard a single guest say that they needed something to satisfy that that business outlet. It's usually the creative outlet that people want. So hearing the other end of it is so fascinating to me, but you're, you're 100% right. And I, I tell people that, you know, especially after... I've now done it a couple of times. Producing can be a thankless job because mm. a lot of people don't think about it, but it's so important because yeah, you got to have a good script. You have to have your actors and you have to have the creative side of it to have a film, but it also doesn't happen if you don't have the business side. And, and in fact, it will put you in a, a deep, deep hole if it's not done correctly uh, and, uh, and, and you're right. And I mean, putting all the pieces like they're the, they're the, the producers are the puppeteers, right? They put all of the pieces together. They make sure that the engine is, is oiled and lubricated so that all of the creatives and all of the, uh, uh all of the crew and all the director and all of the pieces can do their job in the most efficient way with the correct budget with the, the correct locations, with the correct, you know, uh, costume budget, set deck budget, everything all in place. Um, and, you know, finding, finding the right people for each and every single position from like, from like van driver, PA, 
up to like the the high value star of the film the right pieces are essential to get these films across the finish line to distribution to to being in the black no, you're 100 percent right I, I use this analogy a lot and that all those positions that you name director pa producer they're all hogs in a machine mm -hmm. and if they're not all in the right place the machine's not gonna run yeah like you said the producer's almost like the person who puts the cogs in the machine yeah. in order to make sure that it runs so no that's that's fantastic what was it that and you mentioned having that that business mindset but and trying you know these different things in the industry was there like an epiphany you had when you started producing and you said that's my outlet for my business mindset well yeah i mean all of a sudden i had like a a 9 to 5 well actually no much longer i mean i have like meetings after this right and it, it's it's I don't know, as an actor, there's so much people are, there's so much downtime. There's so much like unknown. Sometimes I'm just slammed and I can't catch a breath and I have like eight auditions and I'm memorizing all these sides. But then all of a sudden there are three weeks and you're like, what am I doing? Like, what do I, and, and that's where I feel like it got a little sticky for me as, as solely an actor, right? Because I was trying to make, trying to figure out how to make things happen. Right. And of course I write. So I would write scripts. I would constantly do, I do zooms with colleagues and friends and like accountability partners and writing partners and just keep things going. But there was, so, there's something about like, you know, building decks, uh, drawing up budgets, reading scripts, meeting new people, bringing people together, finding, you know, finding investors and, and bringing investors to the right projects and all of these things that, that are sort I'm just really, I, I feel that I'm really uh, good at, I'm a very detail oriented and organized and disciplined like human and, and having something that I can control and rely on uh, was very important to me because there is no, you cannot rely on anything and 99% of acting is out of your control. Right. And that's, that's very challenging for my personality to accept that. So I was trying, I tried to control everything. And when I found producing, I found that, you know, <clears throat> I always say this, that this is not acting is not a meritocracy, right? So it, it just because I work my butt off and, 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 you know, I, I, I think I deliver the, the best tape. I mean, obviously that's not the case, but, I, I I try to deliver the best Drew tape, right? It there are so many elements that go into it. I'm like, oh no wonder I didn't book that thing because now on the producer side, I see that like booking this person brings almost zero global value, right? So we can't sell this to foreign territories based on their name. So all of a sudden, you know, you all these light bulbs go off that you're like, it's not the best actor generally like it just can't it can't be that right there are so many elements that go into the choosing of that person um so yeah i just i feel that that it's somewhere for me to put this you know spinning energy of business and, and detail it's like you're speaking directly to me when you say that because I, i'm i'm also uh like a detail-oriented person and i also i like to control everything because it's almost like i don't want to say that no one's gonna do it the right way because that's that's not fair but i i feel like if i have control of it it'll be done and if it's wrong then it's on me you know and, that, and that's sure. a learning moment like it's I, I look at it as an opportunity to improve not necessarily just being wrong but that's where i've kind of found it as well being that you know i i like to be prepared practically everything so that that's how i found it too was almost out of out of a necessity in a way but i there there's a certain enjoyment about it though because you get to like you said you're the puppeteer you kind of get to put all the pieces together make sure they're moving in the right direction and there's a there's a certain excitement about your if you find the right location you find the right actor you find you you get the budget right there's an excitement in that so 
I alluded to this earlier. We were talking about uh, a pretty cool video game project that uh, you got to be a part of. Uh, Skydance New Media's 1943 Rise of Hydra, and you are the voice of Steve Rogers himself, Captain America. So what what was that experience like? Oh my gosh. Well, so we're, we're uh, still, they, we dropped the trailer. Uh, so yeah, Skydance New Media is publishing and developing it. Um, and they are just an incredible team. Um, and uh, yeah, Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra. It's, uh, it's an incredibly cinematic game. And at the Game Developers Conference uh, back in March, at the end of March, um, we, they dropped the trailer and uh did sort of a look inside how the game is being created and it was a magical experience and um the whole cast and creative team is just completely committed to creating this world and bringing this this game and this 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 world to everybody's eyes uh and uh yeah it, it, it's it's a very humbling experience to it was a humbling experience to get that call, even more humbling experience to see myself for the first time and to see all of my castmates for the first time uh, when the trailer dropped. It was a, a very magical moment. And uh, I think we were, we were discussing right before we got on that you had just watched the trailer. And um, yeah, it, it's pretty, pretty mind blowing. And, and I, I feel like I'm not even biased saying that. It's amazing, especially because, you know, I can remember being four years old and playing the original Super Mario Brothers on the NES and to see where video games have come. Mm -hmm. It's like you're truly like you're watching a movie. Yeah, it's it's mind blowing to me how good it looks. I, I feel like I'm watching one of the Marvel movies, to be perfectly honest, but you get to interact and play in that world. And that's that's what's so cool. And I, I know that, you know, the game's not supposed to drop until 2025, but we're almost halfway through the year already. So it's going to be here before you know it. Uh, yeah. But I, I think I just want to say, you know, it it looks great. I can't wait to play it. It's going to be a day one purchase for me. So uh, did you did you grow up a Marvel fan or are you I'm sure you're at least aware of how popular Marvel and especially Captain America is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I I did not. So I actually grew up very rural. We didn't even have a TV. So like I I did not like my first foray into like video games was like Nintendo 64 playing like Mario Kart and like Goldeneye. Uh uh and it's funny because I I, I don't game and yet I I will probably play this, but uh I don't game and yet I do a ton of video game work. So it's it's this fascinating uh kind of uh lane that i've fallen into um but yeah of course i i realized they told me you know when i was auditioning uh i i was aware of what i was auditioning for and um it was i could not believe one when i heard that i that i booked it that this you know he's he, steve rogers is such a globally recognized and loved character you know sort of a state a household staple um and it, it truly i've already said it but humbling to step into those shoes or boots and uh and take take that on yeah absolutely i i can't wait to see more of it and i can't wait to play the the final game yeah. once uh once it comes out well thanks um, derek yeah, absolutely. Another project that I wanted to talk to you about, and those that are watching on YouTube, you see the poster right over your uh, your right shoulder, Bloodline oh, yes. Killer, which uh, was re recently released. So, um, yeah, tell me about it and uh, and your role in the project. Yeah, so uh, I think I think the beautiful part about Bloodline Killer is that it's sort of this great combination of like it gives horror fans what they crave, right? It's a classic slasher with great blood, gore, suspense, jump scares. And then it's also got these, these three dimensional characters and relationships that the audience and the viewer can really get invested in and care whether they survive or don't survive. Uh, I think that's very important to me. My, my wife and I are huge horror fans and 
I think that's a very important element, right? Of course, there are some horror films that like you're like cheering, like hoping that that person dies, right? <laughs> but like then, then there are those unique films where you watch them and you're like fully invested in the story, their journey, and what will happen to them. And um, I think I think we've achieved that with this film, and it, it really, it really, I think the ultimate goal is that it's you know the the next masked killer that the that the horror genre and fans are craving and i think the horror genre needs that because you know you you still people know freddy krueger jason Voorhees, michael myers but there's not really outside of maybe um i think his name's jigsaw from the saw mm -hmm. movies yeah you don't really have any recognizable modern horror killers or characters in a way so hopefully that's the case, but I, and that's great to hear because you look at a lot of horror films and I, I'm newish to the horror genre, but a lot of the modern horror films I feel like are kind of shallow. Like you don't mm. really have that emotional investment in the characters. Like they're almost there just to be killed by the killer. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have anybody to, it, it's basically a kill count. Essentially. Right. I mean, but, we uh, might have a few of those, but <laughs> well, well, yeah, I mean, even the classics have those. But as far as having at least one character that you're emotionally invested in, you want them to survive and For make sure. it to the end of the film. So, yeah, that, and, that's fantastic. Yeah. And, and, and I think for me, like the more relatable and real the person is, meaning like, oh, my gosh, this could happen to me and to my family. And like this person could be right there right now. That's that's where it really hits home for me in the horror genre. Um, and and yeah, this mask is just iconic. Um, and we really hope that you know it's been a great response since it dropped last Friday, the twenty sixth. Um, so we are we're we're thrilled to see it's it's going it it's opening in most foreign territories right now. Or two two days ago, a lot of them opened. So. It's uh, it's been a great response, and uh, we're just hoping that it uh, it continues, and uh, you know, potentially there's a there's a future of of maybe seeing where things go from from after the first. Fingers crossed. That's it, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see it too. As I mentioned, you know, I'm I'm newer to the horror genre, so I'm always kind of seeking out new horror films to watch. So yeah, I, I'm I'm really excited to see it. Yeah. Oh, and you mentioned uh, Jigsaw. So Shawnee Smith is the lead in this film, and she's Amanda from all the Saw movies. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So what's next for you? Do you have any other uh, projects that you can talk about at least, or you know any? I, I imagine you have a lot of irons in the fire. So what's next for you? Yeah, I do. Uh, thank you for asking. Yeah. So I just came back from L.A. We had. Uh, we were at the uh, Beverly Hills Film Festival for Ballad of a Hustler, um, which is a, an incredible uh, story of a Brazilian immigrant um, coming to the U.S. and sort of all of the things that he experiences uh, through our country and the, the, the people in our country. And I, I play one of the uh, not so pleasant people that he experiences in our country. Um, so it's a wonderfully beautiful and impactful film and it's been making its rounds through the festivals and has done very well. So we're very excited about the future of, of that film. Um, and uh, yeah, I have another horror film that's in post-production right now called the plantation and yeah, working on a few other things. I have some other films that I just produced, uh, did not act in. So those are uh, all in post right now. And then I'm constantly auditioning and I'm, I'm flying down next week or actually driving. Uh, it was just sim simplified things for me down to Baltimore to shoot a Toyota Tundra commercial. So, you know, just constantly moving and grooving and uh, and, and keeping keeping things flowing. Yeah, I you mentioning the Beverly Hills Film Festival. I was just out in LA in February for the um the Golden State Film Festival, I believe yeah. it was at the yeah. the Chinese Theater. Yeah, I had a film that I directed played there. And it is it's I love I love film festivals. I love that's going. Great, man. I love oh I appreciate it. Congratulations. That's huge. We Thank were at you. the at the TCL Chinese. Yep. That's where we were. Yeah. Nice job, man. That's cool. fantastic. What film was that? 
Uh, it's called The Feature. And oh, yeah. It's funny okay, enough, cool. Ironically, it's a short film called The Feature. You can see the, yeah. the poster of it right there. But... Yeah, I looked. I was looking. I was like stalking you a bit the other day. And uh, <laughs> and I saw that. It looked really cool. No, I appreciate it. It's the, the story behind that movie is really kind of mind blowing because my wife helped me with the script and she ended up doing the the edit for it and had wow. never edited anything before until I showed her how to do it. And she won an award at, uh, <laughs> I, I can't remember what festival it was, but yeah, she won an award for best editing. Oh my gosh, man. That's it's fantastic. Amazing. Congratulations yeah. to you and your wife. Yeah. I appreciate that. But yeah. I, I, I love film festivals. I love the networking side of it, getting to see other films. And I, I tell filmmakers, even if you don't have a film playing in a festival, just go. Yeah. Cause you never know who you're going to meet. Oh my gosh. It is a hotbed for relationships and you know, everyone's there for a common goal, right? They've got, they've got a thing. It generally a passion project that they've created and that they want to show the world. And like, everybody's so supportive of everyone else's work. And, you know, I, I, here's a, here's a fun little piece of advice that like my buddy and I, who just flew out, we flew, flew out, I flew out for 36 hours, right. To just go to the screening, go to the Q and a, uh, red carpet screening, Q and A after party, right, and mingle, blah blah, and made a bunch of relationships. But what I'll say is that from now on, and please hold me to this, Derek, I'm gonna go to opening and closing ceremonies too, because I think building those relationships from like start to finish is just so valuable, and um, I, I, and it's also just you get the full full experience. It's great to pop out, but like. I think just sitting down, like taking that time, and especially if you have a film in it, like basking in it, right? We we have to bask in these things. I hope you and your wife are like basking in the glory of like what you have accomplished. That's huge, man. And then she's actually going to be directing a short that we're that I'm producing that we're going to film this July. Fantastic, man! I love it. Love the hustle. No, I I appreciate it. I I, I think we need to hold each other to that because for this this past festival we went to uh, it was like a networking mixer mm. the day before the festival kicked off and our short played the first day and then the day after we had to fly back to to florida um because i had to work for my day job but I, that's something i want to do is go to a festival like during its entire duration and go to the yeah. award ceremony and all of that that way you get the full experience yeah for sure and i i think it's just I think it's just like what what we what we owe ourselves, right? It's it's such a it's such a journey, to, especially when you get this this piece, right? You get this thing, this entity, and like this is our this is the moment to like enjoy it, to shine, to 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 watch it come to life. And uh, yeah, I think it's a great a great note for us. And it can be hard to do sometimes because when you have so many ideas that are going through your head. When you complete one project, you're like, okay, well, this is what I want to do next. So then you dive right into that. But I think it's also important to celebrate the wins and celebrate all the hard work that you've done. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're preaching. I'm, I'm like the guy who, who's like, you know, actively shooting a film or like just wrapped. And I'm like on set, I like rap, I go back to my thing and I'm like, okay, guys, what's next? Like, what are we doing? And it's like, dude, just enjoy the moment like live in the now is, is it's so cliche, but it's so true. Yeah. I'm the worst when it comes to that. Cause yeah. I'm always thinking ahead. <clears throat> right. that it's, it's important, not just, you know, with film, but just with life in general to appreciate that moment that you're in. Yeah. Cause it may not ever come again. Yeah. And probably I feel like for both of us, I, I've, I've, I've deduced that for both of us, it's that, that, uh, character trait will always be there that hustle that determination to like get the next thing so like trusting that it's there and uh that we can just live in this moment for a for a little while is is fine right and luckily my wife is like that so she, <laughs> she can reel me in a little bit it's like okay just enjoy it yeah yeah the enjoy big joke it. is that i've never sat down on our couch <laughs> yeah. like have you ever used this television and sat down on this couch and i'm like i can't i don't know i don't know like uh 
maybe yeah, yeah. I, I gotta i gotta go work on this i'll yeah. be back yeah let me yeah. let me let me let me think about that as i go do seven things and then i'll report back yeah <laughs> uh i i relate to that all too well yeah all yeah. too well so um in closing and then you gave some incredible advice uh, but in closing, do you have a website or social media that you'd like to plug so the listeners can follow you? Yeah, sure. That'd be great. Uh, it's my name. My my Instagram is my name at Drew Moreline, D-R-E-W-M-O-E-R-L-E-I-N. Uh, that's where I post everything and anything that you want to know about what's happening next uh, and some tidbits into my personal life um, and DrewMoreline.com. So, yeah. Fantastic. Same, same spelling. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Well, Drew, this was great. This was a really fun chat. We'll we'll have to do this again. I would love nothing more. Thank you so much, Derek, and I appreciate your time. and uh, And you have a great day. And keep on hustling, man.